Here we're going to derive the equation for the Doppler effect in sound, the change in frequency heard by an observer due to either the motion of the source of the sound or the motion of the observer, or both. We're going to consider the two cases, moving observer and moving source, separately, and then combine them into a single equation at the end. First, let's consider what happens when the source of the sound is stationary and the observer is moving directly towards it. Let's define some variables. The source is vibrating with some frequency, F0. In my simulation here, that's 500 hertz, 500 compressions created every second. That's the frequency of sound the observer would hear, too, if the observer weren't moving. But the observer is moving with speed v obs towards the source. Now imagine the compressions of the sound wave are somehow frozen in place, still, just like in this diagram. As the observer moves to the left, they're going to run into those stationary compressions. How much time does it take to go from compression to the next compression? Time is distance over speed, so t equals lambda over v obs. I've used a capital T, our symbol for the period of a wave, because in this case, it is the period of the sound heard by the observer moving through the stationary compressions. So the observer would hear a frequency, f, equals v obs over lambda. Lambda is v sound over f naught. So replacing lambda with v sound over f naught, we get f equals f naught times the speed of the observer divided by the speed of sound. Now this is just the additional frequency heard, the extra compressions heard every second because the observer is moving into them. The actual frequency heard will be the source frequency plus this extra. The frequency observed is the frequency uh, of the source, f naught, plus f naught v obs over v sound. And another way to write that is f naught times 1 plus v obs over v sound. Finally, reducing that a little bit further, we have the observed frequency is f naught times v sound plus v obs divided by v sound. If the observer is moving away from the source, then the derivation is the same, except we subtract f equals f naught v obs over v sound, and we end up with f obs equals f naught times v sound minus v obs over v sound. Combining both possibilities into one equation is handy, so we get f obs, the observed frequency, is f naught times v sound plus or minus v obs divided by v sound, where we pick the plus sign when the observer is approaching the source and the minus sign when moving away from the source. Now let's consider the case with the observer stationary and the source of the sound moving to the right in the diagram. During the time from the creation of one compression to the next compression, that is the period t naught, the source moves to the right a distance v source times t naught, that is speed times time. Each compression spreading out in all directions at the speed of sound, forming an expanding circle, is called a wave front. Each wavefront, as it expands, is forever centered on the spot where it was born. In the direction the source is moving, the wavefronts or compressions are spaced closer to each other than they would be if the source weren't moving. That is, the wavelength is shorter because the source is moving. The change in the wavelength is the distance the source moves during the time from one compression to the creation of the next, that is, the period. So delta lambda is v source times t naught. Keep in mind that t naught is 1 over f naught, so this can also be written as delta lambda equals v source over f naught. So lambda observed is equal to lambda naught minus v source over f naught. Lambda observed is equal to v sound over f naught minus v source over f naught. And that simplifies to v sound minus v source over f naught. The observed frequency is the speed of sound divided by the observed wavelength, lambda obs. And so we get f naught times v sound over v sound minus v source. If the source is moving away from the observer, or in other words, the observer is behind the source, then the wavelength is increased 
we add delta lambda, and we end up with f obs is equal to f naught times v sound over v sound plus v source. Combining the two possibilities into one written form gives us the observed frequency is equal to f naught times v sound over v sound minus or plus v source, where we choose the subtraction when the source is moving towards the observer because this reduces the denominator, the resulting frequency is higher, as you know it is in reality. If the source is moving away from the observer, choose the addition sign. Now, finally, imagine that both the source and the observer are moving. Combining all four possibilities into one equation, we get that the observed frequency is the source frequency f naught times v sound plus or minus v obs over v sound times v sound over v sound minus or plus v source. The v sound on the bottom, the v sound on the top cancel, and we're left with the observed frequency is f naught times v sound plus or minus v obs divided by v sound minus or plus v source. In both the top and the bottom, if the source and the observer are moving towards the other's position, we're going to choose the first choice, plus or the minus, whichever one comes first in our, our choices there. If they are moving away from the position of the other, then you're going to choose the second choice, minus v obs in the numerator, plus v source in the denominator.